In this video, I will be reviewing the Evolution S355 MCS. It's the industry's first 14 inch metal cutting mitering chop saw. What makes this chop saw unique is that it does not use an abrasive wheel like you may have seen on other chop saws. This saw comes with a 14 inch 66 tooth carbide tip saw blade, which has teeth like what you would see on a wood cutting saw blade, which will make faster and cleaner cuts. The S355 MCS is also a true miter saw. It has a 46 degree mitering base, both to the left and to the right. It has a thumb lock lever so that you can lock the saw into any angle between zero and 46 degrees. If you look on the back of the saw, it has a sliding base, but this is not to be used like a sliding miter saw that would be used to cut wood, but rather for positioning the saw blade so that it hits the metal to be cut at the correct angle. The base has three locking positions that make it easy to find the right angle needed to make a cut. This saw also has dual sliding cast iron clamps on the front to secure the metal to be cut. This makes it possible to clamp very close to the blade when cutting short and small pieces of metal. The height of the bar is also adjustable so that different sizes of material can be safely clamped while cutting. There is also a quick release top clamp as well as three V-block adapters that can be slid on to any of the front clamps or the top clamp. These will help give a tighter grip on some materials such as angle iron and square tubing. There's also these holes in the base of the saw which will allow the use of bench dogs or optional clamping accessories. And just like my other Evolution Chop saw, this saw has an onboard Allen wrench which is used to change the cutting blade. Having it on board is great because now I don't have to go looking for the correct size Allen wrench when I need to change the blade. And speaking of blades, Evolution makes a wide variety of specialty blades, such as one for cutting non-ferrous metal like aluminum, and also a thin steel blade for cutting smaller and thinner metal. I have both of these blades on hand and will be testing them out in this video. If you decide to get one of these saws for yourself, I have provided links down in the description of the video. And also remember to use the discount code making stuff to receive 5% off of your order from the Evolution webpage. And finally, I'd like to point out that Evolution did send me this saw to make a review on it, but they did not pay me for this review. So this video is 100% my honest opinion about this saw. So enough talking about it, let's make some cuts. All right, so first on the chopping block is some one inch square tube with an eighth of an inch wall thickness. And I'm going to clamp it right here to the saw using these front sliding clamps. Now these clamps are ratcheting, so that means they will go forward, but they will not come backwards unless you lift this lever. And then once you get them into place, you can tighten them down by turning this knob. And then that pretty much locks my piece of metal that I want to cut into place. All right, and it's all set up here, so let's make the cut. All right, so not bad at all. It made a really nice, clean cut on that one inch square tube. And I know some of you are saying, hey, this is a miter saw. Let's make some miter cuts. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. All right, so I've got the same one inch square tube in here and I have it set to a 45 degree miter cut. I have also slid both of these front clamps down to the left side to hold this into place. And now I'm going to make a miter cut on the end of this square tube. So that made a pretty clean cut. That's exactly how it came off of the saw. I have not touched this up with an angle grinder or a file. Let's put the speed square on here and see. Yep, that is a 45 degree cut. So it made a pretty decent 45 degree cut on this steel. All right, so let's step things up a bit. I'm gonna use some three inch square tube with one eighth inch wall thickness. And again, I'm going to do a miter cut and I'm just going to hold it in place using these front clamps. And it's all set up, so let's make the cut. All 
All right, so here is that three inch square tube with the 45 degree miter cut in it. And that is exactly how it came off of the saw. It has not been cleaned up. And here is the piece that was cut off of it. And if I put them together, you can see that made a pretty decent, if I can hold them together, that made a pretty decent cut there. All right, so next I'm going to cut some two inch angle iron. That's what I've got loaded up in the saw now. And I'm using this top clamp with one of the V blocks to help hold this into place. And I'm using one of the front clamps. And that's what's nice about these front clamps. If you don't need them, they just slide right off and you can set it over here out of your way so that it doesn't get in your way when you're making the cut. So let's just make a quick cut on this two inch angle iron. There you go, that's not bad at all. That's a really clean cut on this two inch angle iron. Okay, so I've got some three inch angle iron loaded up here and it is a quarter of an inch thick. And I'm gonna show you one of the nice features about this carbide tip blade. That is, it does not heat the metal up. If I had been using an abrasive blade, this metal would have been glowing red hot when it was done cutting and there's no way you would be able to pick it up with your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and then immediately I'm going to pick it up with my hand and show you that the metal is not hot. It doesn't even get warm and that you can just hold it in your hand and it won't burn your hand. So let's cut this angle iron and I'll show you that right now. So as you can see, let me lift my visor here. As you can see, this, it's not even hot. I can hold it with my hand, same over here. Like I said, if this had been an abrasive wheel cutting that, this thing would be glowing red hot. All right, so let's step things up a bit. I've got some one inch thick solid steel here. And this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna cut it on its side. That's gonna help make an easier cut. So I've got these V blocks installed on both of these front clamps and I'm going to just tighten them down into place. And now we can make the cut. And there is the clean cut made in my one inch thick mild steel. So this saw does a pretty decent job of cutting steel. So far it's been able to cut everything that I've been able to throw at it, but let's try something different. I do have an aluminum cutting blade for the saw. And if you've been watching the channel, you know I've been working on an aluminum jet boat. You can see here, here's the rear end of it right here. And I've got a bunch of scrap pieces of aluminum. So let's put this blade in the saw and see how well it cuts aluminum. All right, so I have removed the saw from my table and I just wanna show this to you guys. This is also an Evolution product and this is great for cleaning up all of this metal sawdust, all these chips that are all over my table. This has a magnet in it and then when you pull this, it releases the magnet. So it's real easy just to wave the magic wand all over these steel chips or sawdust, whatever you want to call it. And you can see it sticks to this. And then when I'm ready to dump all of these little metal shavings that are on this tool, I just pull the lever on the end and they all drop off into my waste bin. And if you're interested in this tool, I will have links to it down in the description of the video. The saw is now set up with the aluminum cutting blade installed and I went around the shop and the biggest piece of aluminum I could find was this two inch square tube that has a quarter of an inch thick wall on it. And this was a brace that I had to use on the jet boat. It was a temporary brace. And you can see here where I cut it out of the jet boat when I was done. So I'm just gonna chop this piece off the end. Let's see how well it will do.
And the saw had no problems cutting through that aluminum. The chips didn't bind up in the teeth of the blade. And as you can see here, it made a nice clean cut in this two inch square tube with the quarter inch thick wall. So the Evolution S355 MCS had no issues cutting that thick aluminum with the aluminum cutting blade. Now let's try some thin steel. I have got the thin steel blade here. Let's install it in the saw and see how well it works. The saw is now set up with the thin steel cutting blade and I looked all over the shop and I thought I had some thin steel and I really couldn't find anything other than this piece of old fence panel that came from Tractor Supply and you can hold it and just tell that it's just not very heavy so this probably isn't that thick. And you can see the end is smushed on both ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and then I will see how thick it is. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be about the thinnest thing I can find to cut. And this piece is round, so I am using the V-blocks on all three of the clamps. I'm also using this top clamp. Let's see how well it will cut this thin steel. So here is the cut that it made on this round tubing and after I cut that smushed end off I was able to put the calipers on this and this is 30 thousandths of an inch thick which is right about one millimeter thick. So it did a pretty decent job on this thin steel. Let's try a miter cut and see how well it does. And here's what that miter cut looks like on this 30 thousandths or one millimeter thick steel. It looks like it did a pretty decent job. I have made two miter cuts in this thin steel and I'm going to put them together. I'm going to show you just how well these pieces meet up together. That is tight. That is almost perfect. I don't know how you would get a better miter cut than that, especially in steel. And no saw test would be complete on the Making Stuff channel without cutting a piece of railroad track, which is what I've got right here. I'm going to load it up into the saw. I have put the mild steel blade back into the saw. Let's see how well it will make this cut. All right, so I've got the railroad track all set up into the saw. I did have to clamp the front clamps on like this because I did raise the bar up a little bit and try and clamp here on the track, but that just wanted to push it over. So I'm gonna try it this way. I've also got the top clamp clamped on right here. And I did have to move the head of the saw forward a little bit using that slider on the back. And that's exactly what this is for. And what that has done, it has pushed the blade forward so that it'll make a better cut on this railroad track. So it's all set up here. Let's see how well it will cut the railroad track. And again, as soon as that was cut, I was able to pick this up with my hands. I would not even dare try that with an abrasive saw. But as you can see, it made a nice clean cut in my piece of railroad track. And one last thing I'd like to say about the saw is that it is a heavy duty saw. It weighs about 70 pounds with the clamps installed on it. It has a 15 amp motor and that motor did not bog down on any of the cuts that I made, including when I was cutting that railroad track. So if you're thinking about buying one of these saws, check out the links that I've got down in the description of the video. This will take you over to the Evolution webpage where you can check this out for yourself. And while you're there, be sure and use the discount code MAKINGSTUFF where you can save 5%. 
I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.